Hey, what's up guys? My name's Austin Ross. Here on this channel, I share tips and tricks for rig welders, pipeliners, and the pipeline lifestyle. Part of that pipeline lifestyle is doing whatever it takes to make ends meet whenever you're off work. For me, that means running this welding truck on a variety of things, trying to be diverse as possible. One of those things I do is pipe fence. So come on, let's go weld on a little fence. All right, here's what we got. Got to run some top rail, I think two and three eighths top rail, two and three eighths post. I think he's gonna put this barbless wire in here. But we're gonna take out this corner because it's kind of not in the right place or whatever. So we're gonna move this post over and then uh, probably come back, still do this situation. You know, essentially three braces out here. One, two, and then three to line up with this, that other H brace at the driveway. So that is the situation. Got her all laid out, ready to punch some holes. There's the old fence line. Gotta pop holes in that today. But first, gotta go cut the post. I'm gonna cut them at 10 foot. Seems like I've done them at eight in the past because the fence is roughly five foot tall. But, it just depends on how tall the fence is and how far you want to put them in the ground, what type of what type of ground it is that you put it in, if you can even go that deep. But the deeper, the better on any fence. Personally, from what I've learned from guys that I know, from what Mitchell's said the other day, Mitchell said he uses 10 footers and then puts them in the ground a two, three feet minimum, like really more than three, at least three feet in the ground. Uh, with concrete, of course. But anyway, I'm gonna get out here and cut these posts. Hey! Had to put on my coveralls. Chilly this morning here in Oklahoma. Come on. All right, got 22 and 3 8 post cut. Now I gotta cut three of these four inch post at probably 10 foot. Need to be at least three feet in the ground for them corners. One of my favorite parts about fence, setting them posts, baby. Getting them all plumb. Got Mitchell's eagle eye looking at our levels. And getting them nice, nice and plumb.
coming right along. We got, I think, 10 more posts set behind me here. So that means we would, have, we would have 23 set already. I'm sorry, 13 set already. Here comes Mitchell with our water truck. Got all the posts set. It's the weekend, so I'll come back next week. Lay it out and lay a little top rail, weld some clips on, and then uh, they'll string barbed wire or cable, whatever they decide. Just poured me a cup of coffee. I'm gonna go to Mitchell's house real quick, drop off some stuff that's on the back of my truck. Post hole diggers come along, stuff like that. We used electric wire to, that's what we've done on the last fence where we laid out and stuff, and the, that's what we used to set these posts was a steel electric wire versus string. A lot of times you use string line. String line kind of blows around and, and uh, I mean you can get it tight, but this steel electric line, you can put that clamp on there, come along it and get it real tight, like a guitar string. We really like it, so I'm glad Mitchell tried this electric wire because it works good. Good. So anyway, go to his house, drop some things off, and then go to the house and enjoy the weekend. And uh, come back and finish that, finish that fence, weld that up. Come on. Here's the project of today. Gotta put a little old top rail on these posts we set the other day. First things first, I got to uh, pull a string and lay out, make marks where I want to cut the saddles for the top rail to lay in. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm tying into this shorter fence. This fence is it's showing roughly four foot to about right here. Normally I'd make my fence up here around five foot, so I'm just gonna have to make it match, you know. Of course, you know the ground ain't always level, but the main rule of thumb that I know so far from the little experience I have is you just want the fence to be appealing to the eye. The level kind of goes goes out the window because I mean this ground ain't level so you just want it to look good you want it to look nice and fluent with the ground all right so I came down to this other end and I made me a mark roughly four foot off the ground and I say roughly because I just want to get a mark on there and then pull my string from back here like you see I did this right here is a trick I learned from my grandpa doing concrete work because doing concrete work you have to you know build the form build the forms and they all have to be level and all that stuff well to do that you drive stakes in the ground to begin with and uh square it all up and whatnot and this is one thing that he did we drove a uh, rebar in the ground that way the string would stick to it better but just take your tight side which is this side and lay it up underneath the string like this and just pull as tight as you want but yeah anyway i wanted to get a mark down there and then stand back and look at it and I'm gonna end up if you can see it in the camera this ground goes has like a belly in it and I'm gonna go through there I'm probably gonna get some wire some bell and wire and I'm gonna wrap it around at least probably two posts in the middle there bring it down because you can see there's a lot more posts there in the middle but I want it to kind of go down with the ground so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna tie down the string in a couple of places and then stand back and look at it again and see see how I like it <clears throat> and then make my marks and put my saddles and then go get some top rail laid in there and go to town Got them all marked and saddled. Now it's time to cut them off. Cut them off to height.
starting to look like a fence. All right, here's the status. Got all the saddles cut and all my top rail over here end up on here. I just got it all light up there. Nothing's tacked or welded yet. And there's a gap way down there where I will um, make my final tie in, if you will. But first thing I'm gonna do is put a saddle here and get her tacked in line with this other one and uh, go from there. It's like a bunch of mini branches, a bunch of mini branch welds. Got all of that tacked up and looking decent. Okay, now I'm standing back and looking at the string line I just put up for these. I'm just putting in two braces in each, each one, so two, four, and then six. But I like to stand literally way back here. See, this is the road. I like to stand way back here, like in the road as if I was driving by to look at it, see how it looks. I want it to be appealing to the eye. Well, that's gonna have to be it for today. Oh, I forgot my magnet. We will get my magnet and then uh, call it a day. We got rain. It's almost five anyway. Almost perfect timing. I was wanting to get this last top rail in, but oh well. All right, it's the next day. It's the afternoon. I have got all these welded out. All I gotta do is put clips on now. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this project. Thank you all for joining me in this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. My advice for this week is on every new project that you finish, try to learn something that you could have done better. So on this fence particularly, I finaled out 
in the middle on that top rail. What I mean by that is I didn't tie in, you know, yeah, my last weld wasn't on the four inch post, it was in the middle. And you can't really see it, but if, like if you get an eagle eye on it and you look down it, there might be a little bit of like, a little bit of dog leg in it. I mean, it's not bad, but still, always shoot for perfect, what a guy once told me. And then it's way less room for error in the long run. But anyway, what I learned on this was instead of doing, I think I only crossed one post and they're, you know, 10 foot apart. Next time I'm going to at least put my final piece of pipe, if I have it, over two posts and then make my laps, make my joints, I don't know, four to six inches away from the post, I think is what I'm going to try next time to hopefully eliminate some of that little bit of dog leg that was in there. So that's my advice is learn from each and every project and do better on the next one. Thank you all for watching. We'll see y'all next Friday. And remember, learn something every day.